What's up? We're back with another episode of MPTV. Today, we got a special guest, a very, very special guest. We got my man, Luis, certified legit from the America's Best Restaurants team. Luis, how's life, brother? Man, I, I can't complain. This is awesome. Awesome. So we are at the company Christmas party. I guess we should be at the party, but we're not. We're shooting a podcast. And the reason I wanted to have you on was you've been a, a part of my life the last three to four years. And it's hard to imagine it's been three or four years, but it seems yeah. like it's been 20. And the past year, you've been on this journey of America's Best Restaurants. And you're a foodie. I'm not really a foodie. I like eating food. But, like, you understand food, and you get it, and you've got all these fancy words, the vernacular that restaurant guys would have that I don't have. And so I wanted to have you on the podcast was because I think you've probably been on site for somewhere in the neighborhood of 200 restaurant visits. Probably. And you, you've seen a lot. Yeah. Definitely. So first – Talk about the what you've seen that's stuck out as a problem from the restaurant standpoint. Well, you know, the, the majority of the problems that we see, I mean, we see it time and time again. We don't see a way that restaurants ask for people's information. So yeah. it, it's really a gamble. You know, you just show up and then you ask them, hey, do, are you guys collecting data? No, I know my customers pretty regularly. So I know what they order. I know their names. And I, where's that information? Well, you know, it's it's right here. I'm like, Okay, so that's one thing that an incredible amount of restaurants just don't have. Brands big and small. Yeah. It doesn't oh, matter. Oh, it's it's franchises, yeah. it's corporate office. Yeah. Early on we we experimented, we visited a lot of different types of restaurants. So we've been at bigger chains, we've been at smaller, we've shot a bunch of stuff and that is a common thing and yeah. you know, you've got a saying certified legit that this dish is certified legit. And doesn't it break your heart that when you're at a restaurant that's got an awesome atmosphere that's got an awesome service, that's got great food, some, an item that you would say is certified legit, and they're doing nothing to broadcast to the world about it. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it happens every week. They talk about, you know, we've had people that just came in last week. They lived in the area for five years, and they had no idea we were here. And yeah. talking a mile down the road. Yeah. So it, it's heartbreaking because, you know, you have this, these incredible dishes, this incredible service, great place that people should know about. Yep. And every day they know about new people. It's like, well, I didn't know you were here. They've lived their whole life. There. And, and then they leave the restaurant. Yep. And it's, oh, shit, I hope Matt Plapp loved our food. I pray the right. next time he goes to get Mexican that instead of the other 20 places, he comes by here. Definitely. Definitely. So we know the problem is that a lot of restaurants, their marketing plan is hope and pray. Uh, the one problem a lot of restaurants don't have that we've seen is some badass food. So the one thing I like that you're, like I said, you're more of a foodie. Uh, talk about some of the stuff you've seen that just made you go, wow. And I know first of all, in my mind is the restaurant in Louisville that had that crazy pork chop yeah. item. What yep. was it called? It's called, uh, so it's called a can can pork chop. That was can -can. a Noche Mexican barbecue. Noche. Yeah. Yep. By the way, get to Louisville. That is, that is a stop. Atmosphere, environment, just fire. Absolutely. I mean, it, it's. Just the setup is absolutely beautiful. It's inside a church. So you got the stained glass windows and everything. But the ironic part is that the decoration is Dia de los Muertos, yeah. right? So it's this kind of ironic setup, but it's just when you walk in, you're like, whoa, yeah. okay, I get it. And then on top of that, it elevates it because the food is just outstanding. And like you said, that dish, the can can pork chop, that's a hard dish to find, very hard to find. I've only seen it in two places here in the States. And that right there, I mean, that's a trifecta. You got yeah. a great environment, great service, and great food. Yeah. You know? Unique. Something unique, yeah. something that's fire, something that's really catching attention. That's something I think a lot of restaurants miss on because we've been to a lot of restaurants that have great burgers, have great appetizers, have great service. There's not that wow item. And I remember talking to a restaurant owner, this was probably about eight, nine years ago. And the negative was he was he's an accountant. He owns a business with a friend of mine, and he's an accountant versus a restaurant person. And we were talking about marketing, talking about uniqueness. And I said, dude, you guys need a $25 burger. What do you mean? He's like, well, we got awesome. I said, you have awesome burgers. I said, but imagine if you took one of those awesome burgers and just made it audacious, something stupid. He's like, well, nobody would buy it. I'm like, people will buy it. And it'll also make people mention you. And like when we go to a place like it was Noche, right? Yes. That can can, like that's something that you're going to do videos on. You're going to do Instagram stories on. You're going to snap pictures of it. You're going to take a selfie next to it. Talk about the importance of, of food that stands out that isn't only like there are some places that have those giant four foot tall burgers that right. people just don't eat often, but 
But that can-can is something you are going to eat often. So talk about the value of something like that on your menu. Oh, well, absolutely. I mean, at the end of the day, number one, you have to ask yourself, where are people going to find it, right? If, if they can't find it commonly, they're going to come for it, okay? Yeah. Number two, they've never had it, okay? Once they have it, they're going to get hooked. Number three, it's very photogenic. So when they see it, that's going to stop them and be like, whoa, what is this, yeah. right? So you have all these little facts and that, and I'm only talking about the food, forget about the environment, forget about the service. Those, those go on top. So when you walk through the door and you have, you see that environment, you're like, Oh wow. Okay. All right. And then you get that great service that right there, you know, it, it's perfect. I mean, so if you have that type of item or if you can create that type of item yep. and you don't necessarily have to buy any new ingredients. Yep. I was actually just at a restaurant in Indianapolis last week. And I'm talking to the gentleman who owns it. And I say, you know what you guys need here? Because they have incredible wood fire burgers, hmm. incredible wood fire burgers, wood fire burgers. Yes. So they have, so they have a grill. Have you ever seen those grills that have the, the pneumatic, um, the actual grill part that raises oh, and yeah, lowers? Yeah, you yeah, ever yeah, seen those? Yeah. Okay. So they have those there and they actually cook the burgers wood fire. So they put logs of wood there. Never seen that. Yeah. So it, it, and it's very hard to control the temperature there, but their burgers are amazing. So in where the, was this at? It's in Indianapolis. It's called Flame Burger. Okay. So it's an amazing oh, that's place. Okay. You stopped yeah. by there the day a second time. I've, I've been there five times the last week. No joke. <laughs> no joke. So they have these. So hold on. Let's go back to that real quick, people. Yeah. This is a man that visits on a bad week, 20 restaurants. Right. On a good week, 75 restaurants. Yeah. This is a place you went five times. Yes. In the last week. And you're not even from that city. No. So think about that from a marketing standpoint that. The impact they made on you, the food made on you, uh, the environment that you've went back over and over. You're a yeah. frequent customer and you live two and a half hours away <laughs> yeah, exactly. and, your, and your work is two and a half hours the other way. Right. Right. Well, I mean, you know, I, I made it I made it a point to stop when I when I come to the office and I, when I go back home, I got to make a, a, a stop there because they impress me. Their burgers are amazing. And they also have gelato shakes. So you in some places you can find a shake. Right. And they have a. Um, amazing strawberry shortcake gelato shake gelato okay. milkshake yeah gelato milkshakes so i told i told the owner i told nick i'm like you know what you need nick he said what's that i said dude your burgers are amazing already right you have all these crazy ingredients i loved your your gelato milkshakes but we need to make a, an elaborate milkshake so i went i told him i said you have a regular beer mug he's like yeah i said i want you to make a, a milkshake in the beer mug i want you to stick a, a piece of Strawberry shortcake through the straw on top of the milkshake, right? <laughs> and then get a strawberry or two, stick them through the straw as well. You need to make something elaborate because your burgers are already really amazing. Not that they're over the top, but yep. they're amazing. But I want you to create another item to draw attention. Yep. And I told them, you can charge $15 for the milkshake. People will come and get it because it's going to stop people. They're going to look at it. They're going to stop the scroll. They're yep. going to say, where do I get that? Yep. And that right there, and, and it's funny because I told them that the second time I was there, three days ago, when I stopped there, because I wanted to have dinner before I came to the office, I said, hey, Nick, how's it going? Hey, do you think, you think about the milkshake? He's like, you know what? I got something I got to show you. Hold on. So I'm sitting at the booth. He, he goes into the kitchen. He comes back like five minutes later. He's got this huge martini glass. I mean, this thing is like this big around, like this tall. I'm like, what's that? He said, well, you know, we have our first birthday party that we're going to we're going to have here. So I'm going to surprise him and make these over the top milkshakes. I was thinking about what you told me the last time. So he's taking action. Yep. And, and again, it's an item that where else are you going to get it? He said, yeah, nobody else has that. Well, there you go. And, and here's the part of that, too. So a couple of weeks ago, I was in Vegas and wow. spoke to the Alaska Restaurant Association, which I I felt like I got kind of Ponzi schemed when they told me I was going to be speaking for the Alaska Restaurant Association. I'm like, <laughs> Hell yeah, man! I want to go to Alaska, and then it's like, oh, it's in Vegas. I'm like, okay, I don't, I don't dislike Vegas, but let's do it. <laughs> well, my, one of my my presentation was on how 600 customers can have a six figure impact on your business profit, and I started doing it because a couple months earlier I had said that people were like, we meet 600 customers. I said, all you got to do is make a deep impact on 600 customers, and that's a different conversation. But when you think about that item, those burgers, the shakes. Mm -hmm these different items that these restaurants are working their butts off to create an awesome product that people really like. And then they're failing 
on the biggest aspect, which is getting people's information to invite them back because the concept of that 600 people, the way you make that impact is by controlling their data and by controlling their emotions that if a guy like Luis gets a text message from El Noche that's not about eating food as much, but maybe it's that can-can. It's like, what's up, dude? It's me, Luis. Can you hear me knocking? I'm at your, I'm at your door. I'm at the, I'm at the, the doors of hunger. Where are you at, man? We haven't, we don't, have you been here this week? You can do something fun with it. Right. And all you really got to do is see it. But the part is that restaurants create these awesome dishes that get you emotional. Yeah. Like me, people ask me, what's the greatest place you've been? What's the greatest food? Like I've been to a lot of great places. And there's not a ton of things. I got one I'm going to in two weeks mm -hmm. that I'll talk about that really stick out to me for whatever reason. I think because there's, it's, I go to so many. Yeah. But the thing that always hits me is, man, you make an impact on somebody like Luis, and then you're hoping that that's on his radar every week instead of determining it's going to be on his radar by controlling the conversation. Right. Exactly. I mean, you know, and, and that's, that's a perfect segue because when I always talk to restaurateurs, you know, I, I make this kind of like word association or like the triggers the top of mind. And I tell them, look, you ask a hundred people out there, you ask a thousand people, people that are watching this right now. When I say the word cheeseburger, you're thinking of McDonald's, whether you like it or not, that's a fact, right? Why is that? Because McDonald's spends the most money telling the, telling you that the place was cheeseburger. It sure as hell ain't the best cheeseburger. No, but that's what you think about because that's what they tell you, right? So with, with that same Thing in mind, what can you do to let your customers know? Like, like you said, the example for Noche, I don't need a special offer. I just need to know, hey, what's up, Luis? I know you like that can can. I'm there. I'm you know, there. You know what I love about you? We're on the same page because you know what happened last night? I'm laying in bed. No yeah. shit. And I forgot. I forgot this, so you just mentioned it. And I meant to write it down, but I was too tired, so I didn't. You either have to outspend or outsmart. True. I was laying in bed last night, no lie, thinking, because I've got a couple of presentations coming up. I got a couple of things I'm working on. And I'm thinking, you know, the problem is restaurants like El Noche don't have the money like McDonald's. Or let's say you're a franchise for Papa John's. Like I had Papa John's pizza last night. Why? I see it all the time. Right. And I don't dislike it. It's not the right. best pizza. It's easy. It's quick. Actually, yeah. last night's wasn't really that good. Their stuffed crust, like stuffed crust is pretty good, but the yeah. pizza actually wasn't that great last night. Yeah. But they can outspend Grandma's Pizza, who's a block away. Yeah. Grandma's Pizza can out can outsmart because the big thing with some of these brands and we've seen it's one of the reasons we stray we don't try and work with franchises is it's a cruise ship yeah and the turn of cruise ship takes forever <laughs> yeah. you can't these mom and pops are in a little miniature ten foot aluminum boat you go in the, the bayou with and find alligators you can move that little thing back and forth fast yeah you either have to outspend or outsmart and McDonald's is outspending everybody. The mm -hmm. big boys are outspending. The, the corporations that have 40 or 50 locations in a market are outspending. You've got to outsmart. And the way to outsmart, and this is the funny part, is the last 100 restaurants, as of two days ago, I had went, I counted 100 restaurants. Mm -hmm. 97 had done zero online or in person to get my information when I spent money there. Mm -hmm. Like, you're so focused on getting my wallet that you're not getting my info. And if you get my info, you can get my wallet more often. I mean, hence, my wife has two of my debit cards in her wallet. <laughs> She's had them for 20-something years. I just realized I don't know where my wedding ring's at. Maybe I'm <laughs> left that somewhere. <laughs> but that's what it comes down to. It's, it, you've got all these restaurants that do way better stuff than the big boys, but they aren't outsmarting them, and they could. Yeah, well, it, you know, I, I think it all comes down for them is, is the whole – if you build it, they will come kind bullshit. of thing. It's bullshit. Yeah, it is bullshit. That only works the first two, three months when when I when I call it's a new restaurant, you're doing your fever time. Yeah. People say, Oh my God, did you go to this place, brand new place, whatever. Yep. But after three months, what happens? Right. Regular. Yep. Regular. So now you're still competing with cheeseburger, McDonald's. Yep. Right? Pizza. What do you think of pizza? Papa John's. Papa John's. Or the Roses in Cincinnati. It's all and over I, the place. And I think of Pizza Hut yep. or Domino's. Yeah. Why? Because they spend the most money telling you, yep. right? Whether you like it or not, that's a fact. Outspend or outsmart. And guess what? Matt Platt can't outspend Procter & Gamble. I can't outspend companies like Toast that are trying to get restaurants ascension. I can outsmart them because I'm a hell of a lot better and I'm way more nimble. We can make moves. Okay, break time. Restaurant owners, you're watching MPTV, so you're obviously interested in increasing your sales and profits. But what if I told you you could eliminate the hope and pray out of your marketing? 
you could spend money and actually see results. You know, most marketing starts with attention, like a billboard. The problem is that attention leads nowhere. That's why we created the ROI Engine Restaurant Program. We take attention and gain huge engagement, whether it's in-store or online. We help you build a database with deep customer information that's comprised of email, cell phone, and birthday. And then we drive them into the restaurant with trackable results. Yes, results you can actually see. If you're interested and wanna have a conversation, check out restaurantmarketingthatworks.com. Worst case scenario, you get a lot of great ideas. Now back to the show. Next topic. So restaurants, what are, what are a couple of things that have gotten your attention? Uh, the one thing that to me that I've noticed, and I want your feedback on this, and this might be one of yours, is how, ed how educated some of the servers are. Like when you go to a place and they have the can-can, you go, hey, what is that? And they go, I don't know, it's some kind of pork bacon thing. Or other places, they go, oh my God, dude, let me tell you what it is. They, the server did that at, uh, at Noche. They talk, I, I was there. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that bacon part of it, cause I don't know how to explain it. It's the best thing I've had in a while. Yeah. What is, is education one of the things that sticks out to you from a server standpoint? Oh yeah, absolutely. Education is important, but I would say more than education, passion, passion, because it's not what you say. It's how you say it. Oh yeah. Hey, you know, we got this can can pork chop in the menu. This is what it is. So you get the pork chop, you get the rib and then you get the bacon as opposed to look guys. We have this incredible dish at this restaurant that you have to try. You've probably never heard of it, but it's called a can can pork chop. Pork chop. And it's a Let game me. changer, kid. Right. So now all of a sudden, you as the person sitting at the table, you're like, okay, what is this? Because you're, you're excited. Yep. Why? Because that server is kind of like transferring the trust on what they believe onto you. So you're way more likely to get that item. This is one thing that I talk to restaurateurs all the time when it comes to dessert. Most people, when you go to a restaurant, right, and you tell them you want dessert or you want to see a dessert menu, 90% are going to tell you no. And I always tell them, never do that. Never say, do you want to see a dessert menu or do you yep. want dessert? Never. Pick one item from the dessert menu. Say, guys, we got this incredible chocolate ganache cake here that you have to try with incredible ice cream gelato. You're, you, your mouth is salivating right yep. now. So I'm talking, you're like, uh, bring it to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know the next level of that? I'm gonna put ten dollars on my table right now. It's my money. If you don't love it, the ten dollars is yours. Oh yeah. If you do love it, thank me with your tip. That's perfect. And that—that's I knew I knew you would bring that up. It's why it was kind of a loaded question. I knew you would talk about because you know, I was recently at a restaurant and I asked. I said, "Hey, what which burger do you really like?" I haven't I haven't really had many of our burgers. <laughs> I'm like, well, "That's that's a great stamp." I'm glad you're the face. Right. But then I was at another place where I said, "Hey, what do you think?" And the dude said, "Literally." My man pointed to it, game changer, add the bacon. I went, let's do it. And we got it. I think I actually got double bacon if I remember. <laughs> and it, it, to me, it just instilled confidence. And it's like I was uh, in Arizona a couple weeks ago at a restaurant called Chestnut that we work with. And I noticed I was kind of doing a training with them. I said, hey, I've watched your employees. Nobody is asking people to opt into the program. I had just had this pastry. They have homemade like pop tarts. Like not even, I don't oh, call, wow. I don't even want to insult it and call it a pop tart. It's like the 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 grandfather of pop tarts. Okay. And so Christian had brought one out for me. He's like, bro, you gotta try this. I'm like, man, I've already eaten two meals this morning. I'm done. And he's like, you gotta try it. I know you. And so I tried. I'm like, oh shit, this is awesome. And so I'm sitting there eating this thing, and I'm watching the people. And I walked over, and the owner came over, we're talking to her, and we met. And I said, Joe, would you mind if we shot a video? And she said, Well, what? I said, I want to walk up to the register. And I want you to film me the uh, video you can send to your staff because I'm going to show you how to sell passion. And so we walked up and I said, I'm going to imagine that that person is Matt Plath who just had this awesome pastry. Hey, Matt, you love the pastry, didn't That was fire. Yeah, yeah. You want your next one free? Dumb question. Of course, you do me a favor. We got a VIP program. Scan this code. It's going to ask you five questions. Take 20 seconds. You're going to get that pastry free your next visit and a couple other bonus offers. And you're going to thank me for it. And we recorded it. She sent it to her staff. Go guess what's happened since? They have more people in the restaurant opting in. But I was telling her, I said, this is what I'm watching. The people aren't doing it. Or they're like, hey, uh, you can scan that code and uh, <laughs> something happens. Uh, I, I could send you something. And it doesn't instill confidence. And I think that's right. the hard part with restaurants that I've seen is nobody in a restaurant. And you and I are salespeople. Let's be honest. I mean, yeah. you're, you're probably going to try and like sell me a watch later on. <laughs> like, that's just how we are. 
Yeah. And we're accustomed to that, but it could easily be taught, uh, especially when you have people that give a shit about what you're doing and you have a great product. But that's what kills me sometimes. You go to places and they, they, you know they got something on the menu that's fire. Yeah. And the server just doesn't really like, oh, hey, well, what do you guys want today? Like, walk up and don't, don't ask me what I want. Tell me what I'm having. Yep. My man, you like bacon? It's a dumb question. I love bacon. You know what? Boom, right here. And just start talking about it. Next thing you know, you, you spend more money. I tip more when I get better at like things like that. Yeah. And then if I buy more, the tip goes up even more. Of course. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that you had it right on the right on the head right there. You know, it's 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 an education play or educating your servers about just just transferring that passion. You know, yeah. if there's something they really love, just say it. At the end of the day, as a server, you're gonna make more money yep. by doing that. Yep. I mean, come on. Higher, yeah. higher check, better experience, better tip, Absolutely. more money. Absolutely. Well, cool. Well, I appreciate you being on today. You're, you're actually you. the first. I think you're the first person from the team to be on MPTV. Thank you. Well, I appreciate so it. Like That's that, awesome. We ought to like commemorate it with a plaque somewhere in the studio. Nice. That'd so. be awesome. Restaurant owners, did you know Matt has free online marketing courses that teach you how to successfully market your restaurant? Email support at mattplapp.com to get access to the courses and a free social media content calendar. So last question. Yeah. What does Luis do to put it on airplane mode? So it's you get done, you got phone, you can put your phone down, put it somewhere. What do you do to turn it off? Because I know you're a go-getter and you're you're constantly driving and you got me hitting you up, texting you, calling you all the time, going, What have you done today? Right. What 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 do you do to turn it off and just relax and chill? You know, for me, I I love going to the movies, man. Oh, yeah. I, you know, I have this, this really, really active imagination. I like going to the movies. You know, I like watching a couple things here and there on Netflix. I'm not a TV guy, but a lot of those things make big impacts on me. I'll give you an example. So we have a client, RJ Cinema, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. And Rick Walker. I, re I, I remember telling Rick, I'm like, hey, man, I have some idea. If you don't mind, I want to give you some ideas. Because one day I'm thinking, I'm like, oh, my God, this is incredible. He said, yeah, sounds good. I said, Rick, you need to have movie themed burgers. Ooh, right? Damn. So I literally wrote kind of like a dissertation and I told him, dude, you have at the time the a Black Widow movie was coming out a couple months ago. And fire by the way. Right. Yeah. So I told him, Rick, the 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 Black Widow movie's coming out. I said, This is what I would do. It was me. Okay. You get yourself some onion rings, right? And then what you do is you get squid ink. You ever had squid ink pasta? No. Uh -huh. So it's black. Have you ever seen black pasta? Oh, yeah. Okay. So that's colored with squid ink. Okay. Okay. So I said, get yourself some squid ink, get yourself some onion rings and color them black. Deep fry them. Right. And then when they come out, cut them in half. So you have a semicircle. Okay. So now you make a burger and you take the semicircle, you stick it inside the burger. So it looks like spider legs are coming out of the burger. Right. Right. And then you put the black yeah. squid ink on it. Right. So then so then I said you can call that the Black Widow burger. He said, Man, that's a good idea. I said, look, you also have beer, pair it with a beer. Okay. And then I say, now you want to make it the ultimate? Why don't you sell that whole thing with one movie ticket? That's a whole package. Yeah. Where are you gonna get that? You can't. Twenty nine ninety nine, boom. Right? Love it. So it, it's it's like how do you, you know, so my mind gets very active when I see, when I see all these things. So I'm a big movie guy. I love movies. I love Netflix. That's what I do to disconnect. Cool. And you'll, you'll be happy to know that Cole went and saw the new Spider-Man two nights ago. Oh, nice. And he said, it's epic. Okay. He said he cannot wait to go back and see it again, but all the theaters are sold out. So oh, wow. Okay. You'll love it. So that's all we got. MPTV Luis. Thanks. Thank that was you. a certified legit episode. Thank you. Appreciate it. So restaurant tours make an impact, you know, have an item on your menu that gets people talking, that wows them, but also make sure your team is educated and can sell that passion to people. And last but not least, please don't be three. Don't be the 97 of a hundred, be the three. Cause like I said the other day on a podcast I was on, people aren't doing it. Restaurant tours are not asking for their customers information. So the minute you do it, you're a standout, and you have a way to control your destiny. That's all we got for this episode of MBTV. We're back to the Christmas party. We'll see you next time. Later.